Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Oh my God, he's ruining it. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're out here with DeAnthony, his beautiful ceramic matrix gray ZR1 and my Torch Red Z06. So the biggest thing I really wanted to do here is actually go over all of the differences of these cars. Now, right off the bat, the cars are fantastic. They're both amazing vehicles. And I mean, I love my Torch Red Z06, but at the same time, this freaking ZR1, I mean, it is just incredible. I mean, look at that thing. And there's just subtle differences. I mean, I say subtle, but in reality, they're, they're pretty big. I mean, you see this car on the road, you know, hey, that's a C7 Corvette, but at the same time, it does look different enough that you know it's not just a Z06 or just a Stingray, it's a ZR1. So what we're gonna do is kind of just really go over all of the differences. So what makes the ZR1 a ZR1? What makes the Z06 a Z06? We're actually going to start right here in the front because most of the changes are in the front now there is actually a lot of stuff that the zr one's going to have that my z06 doesn't have but it isn't specifically a zr1 feature so what i'm getting at is something like you know uh d anthony has the carbon fiber roof up there i don't but that is an option you can get on a z06 so it's not specifically a zr1 option so i'm going to go over everything that you literally can't get on a Z06. If you don't get a ZR1, you won't get these things. So obviously we have the front bumper here, which has massive openings for radiator cooling on the front and on the actual driver side and passenger side of the bumper. Now, if you look in there, massive radiators that really help keep this car cool. We got one in there, big one in there, and another one in here. Like I said before, D. Anthony's car is the manual version, so all of that cooling is specifically for the radiator and oil temperatures. None of that is gonna be a transmission cooler in the front like it would be for the auto. Of course, next we gotta talk about this splitter. I mean, this thing is just straight up, perfectly laid out carbon fiber weave, and it's massive. I mean, at its thickest point, it's probably about five to six inches, and it looks amazing. It provides a massive amount of downforce from what uh, GM has stated. But the one thing that was kind of interesting to me is it actually sits a little bit higher off the ground than the Z06. Now that's actually a pretty cool feature whenever you have problems like I do getting in, in and out of my driveway because of how low this sits. Now one of the biggest things I'm noticing is, is actually the front of the splitter for mine is about two or three inches thick, whereas the ZR1 is pretty thin all the way through. It's maybe, maybe half an inch all the way through. So that might be why it looks like it sits higher, but it definitely doesn't take away anything visually. It's just kind of an interesting design choice to keep that from being a problem of getting scraped off everywhere because that thing's a massive amount of money to replace, I'm sure. We can't talk about the front bumper without talking about the side canards. Now again, my Z06 with the Z07 package does have canards similar to this, but these ones are about half of the thickness of mine. So they're basically almost a blade so of course it's gonna cut through the air just like a blade would and because of that this car was illegal to sell in Europe it was actually one of two reasons and this was one of them the other one we'll touch on here in a second but this was basically too sharp and could cause harm to a pedestrian so Europe said no to that now if we look at mine over on my Z06 they are pretty thin too but it is at least double the thickness maybe triple it's not anywhere near as thin i mean i still love these canards but at the same time these ones look even better because they're all exposed carbon fiber which of course matches down into the front lip everything looks just perfectly supercar here so the second thing we're going to touch on is going to be the hood by now i'm sure you guys have all seen the zr1 hood with the hole in the middle literally the supercharger cover sticks right out of the top this was the second reason why the sale of this car was banned in europe because because in Europe, you can't have any part of the engine exposed through the top of the hood, and there had to be a certain buffer under the hood before the actual engine starts. And because this is basically the engine sticking right out of the top, couldn't sell it in Europe. Now again, as with everything on the ZR1, it's all perfectly laid out carbon fiber. This whole thing right here is actually the deflector for water. And then this is the supercharger cover. And then that top part up there is actually part of the hood. This part here, is all open when this hood is popped. We can see straight through it. There is nothing stopping the actual engine from sticking right through the hood. 
So really a cool design. Like I said, carbon fiber here, carbon fiber there. The entire hood is actually carbon fiber. If we come underneath, you can see the exposed weave even underneath the hood. Definitely something would look cool at car shows, but the idea is really to keep that weight down and they definitely did it. So then here we have the supercharger sitting right on top of the engine, obviously, but this cover actually covers over top of the actual supercharger lid. So this whole thing is exposed carbon fiber with a weather seal around it to make sure no water gets in here and all the water is deflected down through there. And again, we got the clutch fluid right there because D's the man and he gets a stick. Well, the third thing is actually going to be the fenders. So the fenders in general are actually wider to basically help house the wide tires in the front. Now, if you remember right, on the Z06, they actually used the same fenders they did on the Stingray, but added the actual fender spats to help house the wider tire. So this piece of plastic kind of fades in from here wider and then goes all the way around the front. Not particularly the best look. So they wanted to do something a little bit better with the ZR1 and decided to actually just put wider fenders on that literally cover up to the outside of the tire. Looks way better, definitely better than a fender spat. I mean, even the name's dumb, but it probably serves a really great function with not kicking up as much rocks and stuff in the back. With these fenders, you also get a slightly different fender vent. And of course, again, all laid out perfectly carbon fiber. And it's a bigger vent, actually has two separate areas where it's able to vent heat out from the engine. Again, GM wanted to make sure this thing stayed cool, especially under track use. So a lot of this stuff being functional was specifically for cooling. And if you look at the side of the vent, how much bigger that is than the one on my Z06. Definitely a difference in the amount of venting ability. Now, of course, like I said, everything on the ZR1 that mine has its carbon flash is exposed carbon fiber on this car with the exception of a couple pieces all of it is perfectly laid out carbon fiber weave whereas mine is all carbon flash you could get it in exposed carbon fiber even on the z06 but it still didn't look like this i mean this front lip and the canards are completely different style and it's not even an option for the ZR1. You get this car, you get all of these carbon fiber pieces. Even the actual cooling ducts in the back, exposed carbon fiber. Yes, this is an option on other cars, but like I said, you didn't have the option on the ZR1. It was carbon fiber or you didn't get it. So the fact that all these pieces are carbon fiber really helps put this car into its own territory of supercar status. Well, the fifth thing that's different is gonna be, of course, this wing. D'Anthony actually has the ZTK package, so he has the massive wang in the back, and this thing is beautiful in person. The perfect exposed carbon fiber, the way the thing looks on the car is just absolutely amazing. I mean, a lot of the pictures when this car first came out, I was not sold on this wing at all. Seeing it in person it is a totally different experience. The thing is absolutely massive. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's Yo, what's up, dog? Can you take me to the airport? I need to get to the airport, Playboy, if you can, you know. You got three Corvettes here, man, I'm just saying. And we have the local hoodlum, guys. All right, so if you, if you can't do it, dog, I gotta, I gotta get to the airport. We're gonna let him go, because he's not riding in any of my cars. Oh, <laughs> uh, guys, JT, go check him out, cars guys. The biggest difference with this spoiler is actually the amount of downforce it creates. So this one actually creates 900 pounds of downforce. GM literally gives you a car that the wing is so massive, it's putting almost a thousand pounds of downforce on the rear end of this car to keep it planted. The Z06 with the Z07 package and the center wicker bill here, this one creates 400 pounds. So if you look at the size difference, of course, this isn't exactly a small spoiler, but in comparison to the ZTK package, it, it is definitely dwarfed. 400 pounds of downforce is nothing to scoff at either, but when you look at this thing, 900 pounds. I mean, the rear end of this car should never come off the road. Number six is gonna be a little lesser known fact or maybe one that people would care about less, but it is for the ZR1. We actually have ZR1 written right here rather than usually it says Corvette. So on the ZR1 it says ZR1, over here on my Z06 you can see it says Corvette. So kind of an interesting little thing that GM changed up just to basically make this car special in its own way. Next, of course, we have the rims. So the actual ZR1 rims are in a kind of a star pattern. This was another thing I didn't really care for originally when I started seeing pictures of the car, but in person, these things are beautiful. I mean, especially these ones are actually carbon flash painted, so they match some of the other little accents and they really, really go well with the look of the car. In the pictures and even in this video that I'm doing right here, it doesn't look quite right. 
But if you see the entire car in person, I'm telling you, the rims are just absolutely fantastic looking. They really, really match the menacing appearance of this car. I mean, just take a look at those things. They're, they're gorgeous. The next item is actually gonna be the exhaust. And this is kind of a weird one because it is actually specifically for the ZR1. And what GM did is actually open up the exhaust even more than they did with the Z06 to let it breathe better. The car sounds fantastic. I mean, you hear the snaps, the crackles, the pops, all of the right sounds coming out of that exhaust. Some of that stuff's more muted on the Z06. You don't get any snaps or crackles, but it's still a loud exhaust on the Z06. This one's somehow even louder. I believe GM said something along the lines of that being as loud as they could get it while still adhering to sound ordinance rules. And lastly, guys, is actually going to be the carbon ceramic rotors. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, no, you can get those on the Z07 package. You can, but with the ZR1, the compound used for the front carbon ceramic rotors is different than the Z06. And the biggest reason they changed it out was because this compound handled track use a lot better than the Z07 package did. So this one can handle a lot more abuse on the track than the Z07 one can just because of that different compound. They look visibly the same. They cost right around the same amount. They're the same size. Everything else is the same. It's just that compound that allows that rotor to not heat up as much, not fail as quickly. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for for today's video if you liked what you saw give me a big thumbs up if you have any questions about either one of these two cars that you don't feel like you want to share in the comment section down below hit me up at an email horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com i'm happy to hear from you and i'll be glad to answer any of your questions i want to just give another thank you to de anthony for letting me go over this car and really point out all the differences for you guys i got to drive the car that will be a separate video but the thing's a monster and somehow it ends up being even better than what is already a fantastic car like I said, words can't express this kind of thing, so you'll have to just experience it for yourself. But hopefully the list kind of helped you guys if you were flip-flopping between the two, which if you are, you're a lucky man because if you really have the ability to get either one of these cars, you're in a position that's pretty fantastic. Hey! <laughs> hey, make sure y'all make sure... Uh, well, you guys are already here, so you guys are already following his channel. He's an awesome guy, kicking ass, taking names. 10,000 subscribers, man. It couldn't have happened to a better guy. This guy is a monster on YouTube and he's just getting better. So everybody keep watching his channel. He's awesome. Gotta go. <laughs> My God, dude, you're making a mess. I, <laughs> it, this thing just blew up on me. It's, it's literally like Cool Whip. I'm yeah. putting Cool Whip on my tires. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, subscribe if you haven't yet. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next one.